Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we are going to talk about how India is on the moon and what it means, um, what the mission is about, and how it will impact foreign policy. Okay, so we have talked a few times recently about how India and Russia were in this very informal, low-key space race. Uh, it's worth noting that the scientific community does not like these types of things being described as a space race. But for the foreign policy-minded, you're both in a hurry trying to get to the same location. I mean, that's what it's going to be called. Okay. We have also talked about how the Russian craft uh, had a rapid, unscheduled disassembly and did not complete its objective. The Indian craft did. The Indian craft made it, made a soft landing at the south pole of the moon, making it the fourth country to make it to the moon behind the United States, the Soviet Union, and China, and the first country to boldly go where nobody has gone before, the south pole. So, it's not really about planting flags, although they do have that cool little logo on their rover that's going to leave marks. There's more to it. It's not just an ego-driven space race. There, there's a scientific objective to this. So we're going to talk about that. What happens now? The lander made it, soft landing. The dust settled. A little ramp came down. A little rover comes out. The rover is going to do what rovers do. It's going to drive around. It's going to look for rocks. And it is looking for water-based ice. They have to specify up there. Water-based ice. The obvious reason to look for water-based ice is habitation, right? If you're going to put something on the moon that has people for any length of time, you need water. That's the obvious answer. The one that is lesser thought of is propellant. It can be used for propellant, making the moon, well, not a giant gas station, but a refueling center allowing further exploration. Um, so all of that's going on, and all of that seems to be going well. Um, the scientific mission is underway. It's gathering all of its stuff. They are beaming back images. It's a win, okay, scientifically. From the foreign policy standpoint, what does India get out of this? Everything Russia would have, and kind of more. Um, you know, we look at landing on the moon as something, we did that a long time ago. No big deal. Yet there's a reason that, that not a lot of countries have done it. It's hard. Um, and it's something that for the most part, you don't see the, most people don't see why it's worth it. It absolutely is, and I have entire videos on that. But... Most people don't see that. So getting to the moon is a country setting its sights on something, coming together and saying, we're going to do this and making it happen. So it gives them a, for lack of a better word, clout on the international scene. There aren't a lot of countries that have been able to accomplish this. And... They have. They have joined that club. Um, it also brings them closer in to the international scientific community, which it's not like India was on the outside of that. Um, but again, it's a whole new level. You know, th this is India is now a country that has landed on the moon. It, it, it carries a lot of weight when it comes to the perception of what that country is capable of accomplishing. They have that now. Um, so it is going to help them. To me, one of the more interesting parts about this is that from what I understand, they did this for like $75 million dollars. That is amazing. That's a shoestring budget in comparison to, like, you know, U.S. spending on 
well, I mean anything, but getting it done, getting it done effectively, successfully, and cheaply, it, it shows what the country is capable of in other settings. It's not something that's going to be forgotten. So that's what's happened. That's what's going on. The scientific mission appears to be going very, very well, and it looks like it's going to be a total success. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.